Hi, my name's Sam and welcome back to another book review. Today I'm going to be talking about Scythe by Neil Shusterman. Shusterman? Shusterman. I can't say it. Shusterman. So today I'm going to be talking about Scythe by Neil Shusterman. I actually went on a bit of an adventure with this one because I started with the book book and then I went over to the audiobook. The reason being is that I really loved the writing and the dark humour and the world building but I found there wasn't really much pulling me in at the beginning and I couldn't really work out why. I kind of decided this is a world-led book, it's not a character-led story. More on this later. So Scythe is a young adult dystopian book. It's based on the idea that there's been a cure for death so nobody's dying anymore, but the population needs culling, so they've created scythes which glean people, um, usually based on statistics or their own philosophy, uh, but once they've been ordained they're allowed to sort of glean as they like, but then they have these concaves which um, all the scythes meet up and they kind of decide what's right, what's wrong, who's not doing things as they should be, and then they test the apprentices. The story follows Rowan and Citra who have an apprenticeship to become scythes. Neither of them really wants to, and then things start to get interesting. Anyway, it kind of goes from there. So this book is all about the world building. Some of the chapters start with an extract from the gleaning journals of other scythes. Scythe? All information has been stored on the cloud, which has become so sophisticated it's now the Thunderhead. Uh, it's in charge of everything apart from deaths. And the Scythes all meet at a conclave to discuss Scythe business. So what I loved about this book is the writing style. It's very quirky, it's got that dark humour. It's got a great tone that matches up to the story very well. What I struggled with a bit more was the characters leading the book. They just weren't particularly that interesting. There wasn't really much hooking me in, um, so eventually I stopped and I switched to the audiobook. And it seemed like a good decision because it's a lot easier to just keep going with an audiobook through the uh, peaks and troughs. So I guess what that means for me is that I struggled a little bit with the pace of this book. The characters are what really connect you with the world and for me I felt that was a little bit missing. This book should also come with a warning. I mean, it's about gleaning and scythes, so it is about death. But the amount it makes you think about death... I, even with the audiobook, I had to sort of pause at one point. I had a little bit of an existential crisis, and, and then I got over it, and then I carried on with the book, and I carried on enjoying it, but I to pause to you know sort out some stuff in my own head. I mean this book does have gleanings in it and a lot of discussion around death and why it must be and why the lives must end and people not wanting to end their lives and it being taken from them and them having to process that in a very short time. I mean if that idea scares you then don't, don't read this book, just don't read it. I don't think this one is for everybody. After I had my crisis, I started to like the book again. I, I had to reassess what the book was. As soon as I realised why I wasn't really being drawn into it, I started to actually like it a bit more. I started to care a little bit less about the characters and just want to learn more about the world instead. Because there are a lot of different characters that come and go. You, you can't really feel too connected to any of them. These all sounding like negatives. I did enjoy the book. The book might have done a bit of a number on me though. And then the ending. This book has the perfect ending in my eyes. It sums up everything that you wanted to know from book one. It shows that the characters have grown and then it left me thinking, well, what are we going to explore next? And I have a feeling I might like book two more than book one. There's more to explore about the world. The main characters finally become interesting. So I think I'll definitely go for book two. Probably the audiobook. I have a feeling if I just bought the book it would just go on this lovely bookshelf and then we have more books up there and more books up there and even more over there so I don't want it to just sit on the shelf for ages. I think book two I'll need to read pretty soon. Don't want to lose too much of that build up. All in all I would give this book four stars. If you're looking for some escapism this book might not be for you. There were times when I really loved this book. There were times that I just wasn't that keen and there were times where I had to deal with some stuff. Safe. Safe. Anyway, thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!